and welcome back to the quarry garden on a gorgeous morning although it's been very cold and we've had frost for the last few days but as long as it's dry and it's sunny like this I really don't care anyhow for those people who have just subscribed or who are watching for the very first time this is an area in an old sandstone quarry that I'm trying to turn into a garden this is one of the few bank sides that I've started up working on um, started it last March time. Prior to that, I dug out a lot of weeds, an awful lot of weeds. That took me quite a few months. But last March, I started the process of planting um, a lot of perennials, a lot of bulbs, mainly um, plants that I managed to divide in other areas of my garden. And I brought down here. I've had some successes in the last year. And I've had a few failures, but I did expect that because it's quite an impoverished site. Um, it obviously has full sun for most of the day, uh, to partial shade and later in the day. But some things have really done well. This um, Euphorbia wolfenii, blimey, it's fantastic. I only planted that um, last March and it's huge and the flower spikes are just absolutely enormous. It gives you that lovely winter spring colour. I just love it. And there's other euphorbias that I've added as well. Euphorbias seem to do really well here, and I'm pleased about that. I want it, it's not going to be a formal space, it's going to be quite natural with a lot of grasses uh, and the perennials that I've divided and brought down from my other areas in the garden. And I planted a lot of bulbs to um, uh, give a bit of variety. I didn't want it just to be euphorbias and grasses. But now is the time to plant some more perennials. Um, but before I do that, I've got this um, Pisocarpus, I think that's how you pronounce it, nine bark, and it's, it's midnight is the variety. And I'm going to add that here because I think the leaves, these lovely leaves, I think it'll go lovely against those um, citrusy, limey um, flower heads of the euphorbia. I just think that's a lovely contrast so that's going to go here now this i've never grown a nine bark before this particular one in five to ten years will grow anything to two and a half meters um and about a meter and a half in width so it's quite a substantial shrub it has um blush white pink like flowers in the summer but i'm not growing it for that i'm growing it for the lovely um leaf color um the flowers are really it's are a bonus so i want to plant that here i need to give it a big space um, to actually um, grow to its potential i need to move these um day lilies because they're in the wrong spot planted them last year couldn't have got it more wrong but never mind i'll move those later and then on the other side of me and all around me is comfrey and the bees are just going wild for that today the flowers are just coming out so what I'll do is I'll plant this um, nine bark and then I'll show you the perennials which I've got to add further on round the bank side with some lovely ones. That's the nine bark planted. I'm sure to you watching it looks like three sticks in the ground <laughs> but it won't be long before it grows and these leaves will just take on a gorgeous colour as the year goes on. The only other thing to add it likes humus rich soil which I added a lot of farmyard manure and compost because this soil is quite impoverished never been used before so I think it should thrive here but now let's move on to the perennials. Just thought I'd give you a glimpse of the border that I'm going to add the perennials to. That is the nine bark I planted earlier with the Euphorbia wolfenii. Um, I had a lot of different Euphorbias in here and grasses, different varieties, an awful lot of foxgloves which have self-seeded last year. I'm over the moon with that. I only planted three plants and I've got an awful lot more this year so it's filled a lot of gaps. Some bamboos, grasses, alliums, some evergreens and various other perennials that I've added and if I move all the way around this border ends 
right next to a very large sycamore tree, which does give a bit of a problem for shade under um, underneath it on that side of the border. But that's something that I'll have to work with as I get round to that section. But the first plant I'm going to add today is Napita. And I already have them in the front of this border. And the Napita that I'm going to add today is Six Hills Giant, which is one of the largest Napitas you can actually grow, which has huge purple flower spikes in the summer months. Fabulous, drought tolerant plant once it's established and very easy to grow. Once it's flowered once, you can actually shear it right back and it, you'll get a second flush of flowers in the same summer, even here in Northumberland where we don't get as much sun as other parts of the world. Grows in most soils as well, terrific um, perennial to grow. The only problem with this particular one, grows three feet wide by three feet in height, is that it can flop quite easily, especially after heavy rain that we have often here in the summer months. So what I've done here is, and you can't actually see them now, but I've actually grown quite a few um, behind me here through upside down hanging baskets. And it's, it's just an experiment this year, just to see if it can actually hold the shape a little bit better and not flop as much. So I've kind of alternated that between them all around this border. And we'll see if it works. If not, over time, I may have to change that. If it flops again, like it did last summer, I may have to change it to a different edging plant. But I had these um, plants already um, from another part of my garden. I've divided them and divided them and divided them. So they're, they're easily divided. All of these came from, I think, three plants. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have enough this spring once I've divided them again. So I've had to buy, I think it was about four, from the garden centre but all of these ones are ones that I split earlier in the spring so a very good doer but as long as you're aware that it's quite a big plant um, especially for an edge around a border and the other um, perennial that I'm going to make use of today is another free plant is Alcanilla mollus or ladies mantle and I dug these with huge roots out of the driveway and I've got an awful lot of them all different sizes and it's such an easy plant to grow. I won't pot those on, they'll go straight in the ground. They've been living in plastic bags for about three days now, just to keep the moisture on them. Um, I'll plant them and they'll just romp away. They always do. One of the easiest perennials you can grow. And yes, they do self-seed everywhere, which is what I make use of. But a lot of people are put off by that, but don't be. Just cut back the flower spikes once they've flowered in the summer. They're such a lovely plant, the leaves where they hold the, the raindrops, I just love them. It's, it's a shame not to grow it because of the self-seeding problem. Just cut the flower spikes off. Anyhow, I'm going to plant those in between the napita. So you have like mounds of plants going round. I'm going to give that a go. And the other perennial that I'm going to add today, and there's an awful lot of different types and I won't get through them all today, is this one here. And I love this one, it's very architectural. But I'll plant the Napita and the Alcamon Mollus and I'll talk about this one next.
the Alcamilla mollus and the Peter planted all the way around the edge of this path now. It'll take a while, a few weeks for the Alcamilla mollus to grow and then eventually it'll be a similar size to the Nepeta. So it goes all the way around. The stones that you see near the edge of the path are just stones that I've dug out and left there, mainly because they were too heavy for me to move, but I will have them moved at some point. And round the bend here next to the Euphorbia um, wolfenii is a new section which was all comfrey a few weeks ago. So this section all the way around here was comfrey. So that was my um, task for this year to create the border around the bend and that's as far as I've got and next year I'll continue right around to where the steps are all the way along here a lot to do but for this year I'll just let the bees enjoy the comfrey So this lovely architectural plant is a Sirena cardunculus, otherwise known as a cardoon. And at this point in time, it looks very much like a globe artichoke. And it's from the same family, all from the thistle family. Only this one doesn't have the, um, the vegetable. I sometimes think it's a fruit, but I think it's actually a vegetable on the top, the artichoke itself. It doesn't have that. You can, I believe, eat the fleshy stems on, on a cardoon, but it's not something that I'd want to try. Anyhow, I'm going to plant it in that gap just up there and it's right next to some verbascum. There's some three verbascum that I planted last year. It's tiny little plants and they've actually grown and this year they should flower. So I think that should look really good in that spot there. And in dry soils, you're probably only going to get to about five to six feet. But in rich um, humus soil it could grow anything up to 10 feet but I think five to six feet would just be lovely in that spot there. Um, it has lovely just like any other thistle lovely blue flowers and I'm really looking forward to planting that. Now I've got a few but I think I'm only going to plant one here. It's one of the few um, plants I think that you can plant individually. It's not something that you have to plant in threes and fives and sevens, that sort of thing. It's such an architectural, uh, architectural specimen that you don't really need to do that. So this is the last plant of today that I'm going to plant. <music> That's the cardoon planted and in place. It looks tiny. I'm hoping it actually thrives and grows big. Just a couple of things to add. It's hardy to about minus 10, so certainly you can grow anywhere here in the UK. And it likes a sunny, sheltered spot, because obviously if it does grow as huge as what I'm expecting it to, you don't want it in a windy spot. So I may have to stake it. I'll see how it goes. But that's the end of part one of planting this bank side. Part two will be next weekend. But just to end today's vlog, it's a short um, video of our bluebell wood. Can't take any credit for it. It's nature at its best and the deer love it too. That's it for today. Bye for now. See you soon.